Hey, hello everyone. My name is Michał Herda. I go by Fi on the internet. And today I will want to talk about control flow in Common Lisp, or in other words, why Lisp doesn't need to draw exceptions. If I wanted to compress this presentation to a single sentence, uh, because it's uh, somewhat long, I wonder if I will manage to fit in an hour, then this uh, sentence would be that uh, we need means of unwinding and protecting some forms against unwinds. And then if I wanted to cheat and actually change it to a single slide, then a uh, little bit of explanation would be that uh, this way we can implement all of control lisp specific control flow operators with just these two primitives. By common lisp specific I mean that if and uh, function calling, uh, which is uh, pretty widespread in uh, programming uh, far and wide, uh, are not really common lisp specific. They are tag body go. Uh, where a tag body uh, is a tag body allows uh, one to set some labels and then go to them. Uh, block return from allows one to return value or values from some block. And uh, these two are lexically scoped. The catch throw is uh, similar to block return from, as in catch throw is uh, dynamically scoped. So uh, throw doesn't need a lexically matching catch in order to be valid. And uh, unwind protect is just uh, the form that protects against unwind, so the equivalent of C++ destructors or uh, Java's finally block. Uh, tag body go and block return from also re uh, include the one secret uh, ingredient of common lisp that is called uh, non-local jumps. Uh, it is not really widespread in other programming languages. Uh, but still pretty important in common lisp. Since uh, all in all, uh, these primitives that I have listed here allow us to implement uh, loops, switches, error handling and interactive restart handling. So all the uh, kinds of control flow uh, avail available in, in common lisp. And uh, these four groups are actually implemented in, co in common lisp itself based on these primitives uh, listed on the left side. So this is a really brief summary of the whole presentation. And if you didn't understand something from this uh, very distilled, uh, how to say it, essence of it, of it, don't worry, we are just getting started. A few words about me. Uh, my day job is at Ericsson, where I don't really do common lisp, uh, mostly it is C, C++ and Erlang. But afterwards, uh, I do some Lisp on Freenode IRC, on the Lisp Discord, on Reddit. Uh, I kinda wrote a book about Common Lisp, uh, about the condition system that also necessarily includes a little bit of talk about control flow. Uh, I am mostly capable of writing and learning other programming languages, not just Lisp, which hopefully will become evident at the end of this presentation. And to be honest, I like the topic of control flow. And we will talk about this just right now. Speaking very generally, control flow is uh, the order or ordering in which uh, some instructions or uh, blocks of code or f uh, functions or, w or w whatever are executed, how they are executed, when they are executed, how many times they are executed, and so on. Of particular interest of me in this case is so-called uh, non-local control flow, which states uh, what should happen uh, like uh, not just around here, not in this uh, single call of a function, not, not within uh, a single fun function that, that we are calling, but whether we should go up se uh, several functions or down several fun functions at once. Uh, we can see that uh, conditions, exceptions, and continuations are three common sorts of non-local con uh, control constructs. We, we will focus on the differences between these first two, uh, since uh, they are most on topic with regard to, to, to this talk. We will start with exception first. exceptions first, as they are the most, uh, how to say it, widespread means of uh, structured non-local control flow. And there's a lot of languages that you are able to see right uh, in this list. 
uh, some pretty famous ones like uh, C++, C Sharp, uh, Java, Python and so on. Uh, but still, uh, the trait that is uh, pretty common when it comes to uh, exception handling in languages that have this feature is that uh, the stack is sometimes pretty often unwound during the search of a handler that is capable of handling a condition that was uh, sorry an exception that was thrown at a given moment uh, let's illustrate this with a pretty simple example let's assume that we have some kind of stack that grows upwards so first uh, foo was called then bar was called then baz was called and then baz did something stupid or just made an error of some sort uh, in the traditional exception handling paradigm, this means that control flow uh, enters uh, a form of it that is called abnormal, abnormal control flow, and an exception is thrown. Abnormal control flow means that this, uh, well, we are searching, uh, we are, tr uh, we have thrown an exception. We are searching for something that is capable of catching it and therefore handling it. If we don't find it, then we unwind the stack all the way to the bottom and our program crashes. If uh, we are a little bit more lucky and uh, something inside our program catches this exception, then we leave the abnormal control flow and uh, unwind the stack to this point. Execution can then continue from, uh, well, from this point. And this is the general way that uh, exceptions work. Uh, this is the flow, the only flow, I think, uh, in which uh, exceptions can work in general. Whereas uh, when we look at the Wikipedia article about conditions, first of all, we see that conditions are a generalization of exceptions. It means that more than just uh, one flow, as we will see in the next slides, is possible and feasible to use with conditions. More, uh, more importantly, uh, there is a way that uh, allows one to signal conditions without, uh, well, without having this uh, destructive behavior on the stack that uh, exceptions uh, always do. So it is possible to, uh, how to say it, uh, signal conditions that are not errors and nonetheless uh, have some effects on the stack and the, how to say it, the functions that are interwoven into the stack. But, uh, well, they don't introduce this kind of panic behavior that is uh, associated commonly with exceptions. Let's talk about a similar situation as before, uh, except with the conditions instead of exceptions. We have some uh, functions, foo, that called bar, that called baz, and then we do something similarly stupid, or just make an error of some sort. One could imagine that a division by zero error uh, unwinds the stack just like in other programming languages, but well, Lisp is alien technology, and it doesn't really follow this style of error handling. Instead of unwinding the stack, the stack is wound further. In particular, division by zero, this uh, constructed, this created uh, condition object, error object, becomes an argument uh, to an error function that in turn executes some more code. The first uh, part of the two parts of error, since error uh, calling the error function is internally a twofold operation, is calling the signal function. Signal basically takes the condition object and searches uh, the whole stack, the whole dynamic environment for handler objects that are available, that have been made available by, by, previous, uh, by previous stack frames, that code that has executed earlier. And what are handlers? They are basically just decorated functions, decorated a little bit since they can match a given condition type or not match it. So in this case, we could have 10 handlers or 20, but like only three of them are applicable to division by zero. And so these handlers are, well, fun functions. So we call the handler one function that can do something and then return control or not return control. Uh, 
In this case, uh, let's assume that these handlers just return one after the other. They might do some side, side effects on the side, but ultimately they all re return. Which means that signal, after exhausting all the handlers, uh, also returns. At this point, the second phase of uh, the error function operation comes into play and the invoke debugger function is call, uh, called. And the invoke debugger function, by its contract, by definition, never returns normally, which means that it brings our program to a halt. This is a similar scenario as before, since, uh, well, uh, in case of exceptions that uh, completely unwind the stack, and in case of conditions that uh, of uh, error conditions that invoke the debugger, the program execution is uh, pretty much halted anyway. I mean, uh, we cannot continue from an error regardless of what we do. But in this case, we can see that the stack is completely preserved. Uh, the stack information is fully available, so we don't need to, to construct stack, uh, stack traces and stuff them into exceptions. And our program is still there. It is still running. It is still possible to recover from this situation and have it continue executing without, uh, without how to say it, uh, crashing it and starting it from scratch again. I will show how to do this in a moment. Let's backtrack a little bit and uh, go back to the place where we call signal. We will want to talk about it in, co in context of unwinding the stack because when error is called, one of two things uh, happens. Either we unwind the stack in some way and therefore leave the call to function error, or we enter the, we enter the debugger where there is no choice but to unwind the stack since the, the debugger never, ever, ever returns. Let's assume that handler numbers, uh, that handler number two, uh, instead of returning control to the error function, decides to unwind the stack. It can do so, like this for example. So uh, it, it so control goes back uh, to the, how to say it, the exit point of function bar, and foo can then uh, do something else. This can be done by means of a non-local jump. It is a jump since it uh, transfers control and it is non-local because there's a lot of stuff in between the point uh, that initiates the jump and the point that uh, the jump is performed to. After the jump, the situation looks like this. All of these stack frames uh, disappear, but Foo is now in control. So it can execute uh, something else and it can continue execution from some point uh, that it uh, decides to continue from. So this is more or less similar to the exception handling with an exception being thrown by foo. A similar situation can happen when we are in the debugger, except then we don't usually, how to say it, play with uh, handlers, which are a less interactive thing, and we instead go to a very similar concept called restarts. In this situation where we are in the debugger, well, uh, it is all left to the programmer in some way to, well, uh, fix the program, fix the, the execution state of the program somehow, since, uh, well, if uh, the program could uh, fix itself, then it already would have done so, and uh, it can't. So it's time for the programmer or operator to step up and try and do something. To do so, he can use a similar facility to handlers called the restarts, that just like handlers are sprinkled all across the stack by the person who wrote the code and established those. Restarts are also functions though decorated a little bit more, since they have names, they have reports, just like conditions, but they have names, they can apply in some context, they, uh, they can be visible in some contexts and invisible in others, and most importantly, uh, they don't follow the strict order, uh, order that handlers have, they, don't, they aren't really executed from top to bottom, they can be executed in any order that the programmer who just entered the system and noticed the uh, debugger entry deems feasible. They can be uh, invoked in any order 
in uh, how to say it uh, any of them can be invoked they don't need to be all invoked and usually uh, choosing uh, any of them has different uh, results than uh, playing with that then how to say it than invoking the others well they are a uh, well they have different functionality like uh, we have the op operation uh, that divides 1 by 0 we might want to return 42 instead since it is a number that is not the result of this uh, division but well it's some kind of number or if 42 is not valid, we can query the user for new numbers like pop up a UI window or have them input them from, uh, how to say it, uh, input them from the keyboard, something like, like this. And then we can either return them or try and perform division on, on those again. If the input was from some kind of file, then we could try opening another file instead and uh, operate on those. Or in case uh, everything is terrible, uh, we can just try and abort to the top level loop where we can try and execute some other program or modify our program and then uh, continue e e executing it and so on and so on. So there's choices, lots of choices in here. These two mechanisms tie into one another since, for example, uh, handler number two can also, uh, just like the debugger, compute the restarts available at any given time. And uh, let's say that after computing these restarts, it attempts to use the try opening another file uh, restart. It, it attempts to invoke this restart. The invocation looks like just another function call, since uh, the restart function is just another function. And this function, again, performs a non-local jump into uh, the proper place on the stack. The non-local jump is performed and execution can continue, just like before. And so let's talk about the case that is not really possible with exceptions altogether. Let's talk about signaling a condition that is not an error whatsoever. If we have some code that then signals some, some sort of condition, uh, that is called some condition in this case, something that is not necessarily an error and most likely isn't, then we jump into the signal function. Just like before, handlers are found and then called in order. The first handler, the second handler, the third handler, if the previous two don't transfer control outside and so on and so on. And then uh, after all the handlers are exhausted, well, there is nothing left to do anymore. So signal returns. It simply returns since it is explicitly allowed to return. And execution continues from yet another point on uh, in the program. This is a really brief summary of the two paradigms of uh, structured non-local control flow. And I will try to summarize uh, both of them a little bit uh, just right now. When it comes to throwing exceptions, First of all, the exception object needs to be instantiated and properly initialized. Uh, this is uh, the same almost everywhere. Afterwards, the stack is, be uh, is uh, unwound immediately. And then we uh, try to, well, we try to have it caught by something. If, we, uh, if uh, some part of the stack is capable of uh, handling of catching the exception, then perfect, uh, we transfer control to it. If not, we unwind it and uh, keep on going until either we have some point where we can continue execution from or we don't have such a luxury and we crash. If we compare it to conditions, then first of all, uh, we need to instantiate the condition object. Uh, this doesn't really, this isn't really much different than uh, the exception instantiation. But then, uh, instead of unwinding the stack, we search it. Uh, we search it for handlers and then call these handlers as just normal functions uh, in order. And what can these handlers do? Well, this uh, really depends. A handler is a Lisp function and can therefore contain arbitrary Lisp, Lisp code. Uh, this code can be executed. Possibly some kind of restart can be invoked since restarts are available and can be computed by any time on the 
uh, by any kind of code that uh, is executed, they are always there. They are they are always available to be called. Uh, this handler is allowed to do completely nothing and return, therefore declining to handle a given condition and allowing other handlers uh, uh, that are after it to be run. Perhaps it can perform a non-local jump and unwind the stack to some point that was previously established. Possibly there are no handlers, which is also a completely valid situation, at which point signal just completely returns. And there is also a lot of uh, options over here that uh, I can't really think about it uh, uh, at the moment, since, uh, well, it is just pretty much arbitrary. But basically, the signaling function uh, returns if there was no transfer of control and therefore it still executes where all the handlers are uh, exhausted. If we call the error function, then after signal comes invoke debugger and we enter the debugger to hold the execution of the program and, have, uh, and let the programmer have a try and fixing stuff. This makes signaling itself uh, a dynamic list code uh, mechanism of hooking, since if we don't uh, use conditions to represent only errors, then we can uh, just execute code at uh, some points, predefined points, and this code can be provided dynamically by the stack itself. This allows us, for example, to signal some sort of uh, progress condition and updates any progress bars that happen along the way. We can uh, do some message passing when, when we want to pass a message, for example, to another thread or another network, uh, how to say it, uh, server. Uh, what kind of server is this? We don't know. We simply say that a message is there to be passed and allow this handlers on the stack to do their job. We can call asynchronous code in the same way as message passing works, and so on, and so on. We can also use it to collect some information up the stack, like uh, perform uh, passing of information from a given point of signaling to up above. Uh, well, there could be some list collecting uh, results of our computation, and so on, and so on. Something like this. Restarts is a similar uh, f uh, restarts are a similar facility, but instead of hooks, they are more like choices. Uh, when there's uh, choices, there needs to be someone who chooses, which could be the program itself, uh, in case of programmatic invocation of restarts, but could also be, how to say it, uh, the programmer. There could be actions available for interactive programming, for example, if the programmer wants to just uh, list all options available to them at a given point in the program and then choose some. There could also be and this is the most commonly uh, used uh, context. Uh, they are, uh, there are automated uh, means of error re uh, recovery, for example, when parsing uh, I uh, incomplete code. Oh, sorry, I, uh, I'm talking about, about a, a different situation. Restarts are usually uh, used to uh, recover from some situation, but this can al also be used uh, to recover from situations that uh, are expected, for example, uh, there is the a collector library that parses the common list code and in case the code is malformed or incomplete or in any ways deficient there is the restart uh, called uh, I don't remember the name uh, but it is you recover yes it is used to basically get some uh, how to say it's a default action like a replace a symbol that is not uh, from any known package with a symbol that is from the current package or uh, if we have a, an unterminated list we can just terminate it and continue reading and so on and so on so there's choices and in particular if we try to compare these two paradigms of a structured non-local control flow uh, we can see that one of them is indeed a generalization of the other because uh, exceptions are pretty limited in how exactly they function whereas conditions uh, are a superset of exceptions that also uh, allow for quite a lot of uh, stuff uh, that is a variation of the fo of the former uh, well th where you don't want to just blindly unwind the stack and hope that something somewhere handles this really hot potato that you have in your hands. And uh, all of this uh, is uh, pretty interesting, but to actually be compatible with uh, exceptions, 
the condition system needs to have this uh, one particular facility that makes it possible to unwind the stack to some point, to some predefined point that we know that we need to unwind to. A precise point, unlike in uh, uh, exceptions where we can just unwind blindly and then continue going until we crash, since uh, Lisp doesn't really like crashes and even if we try to do some really malformed code things that I uh, will introduce uh, a single example of later, uh, it's still better to signal an error instead of crashing altogether. So we will talk about non-local control flow uh, and we will talk about uh, this situation where a handler is allowed to jump uh, several frames down with all this stuff in between, the call to bar, buzz, the, the invalid division and the error function. For this we will make a, a very small detour to control flow in general and finally to control flow in common lisp that we will talk about right now. I think uh, that the list of control flow primitives in common lisp uh, could be, how to say it, uh, grouped like this. We start with the father of it all, the if statement that has two branches and a test. If the test, in this case foo, returns true, then bar is executed. Otherwise, baz is executed. There is also a tag body that has some labels. In this case, they are integers 10 and 20. And there are go forms that uh, basically cause execution to jump to this predefined uh, label. Like in this case, there is a proof that uh, writing basic in common lisp, basic the language, is uh, very much possible and feasible without ever uh, really leaving common lisp. Block and return from is kind of similar, except it only has a single tag in a way, the name of the block. From tag body, it is impossible to return values, but from block, it is possible, and this is the sole responsibility of a block, to be able to return value or values from it. We can see that we have a block of some sort, and then somewhere deep or shallow in the forms, there is a return from uh, call that has the same block name as the original block, and the value or values to be returned. There is a variant of this construct called catch and throw in common lisp that doesn't really have much to do with catching or throwing exceptions like in C++ or Java. They are block and return from analog when we consider a dynamic point of view. We can see that over here the call to catch doesn't have any kind of matching throw statement. There is simply a call to foo. And the definition of foo throws to a tag called cooks which is luckily caught by the catch cooks that we see on the left. Uh, if foo is invoked directly, then uh, there might not be any catch tag with the proper uh, matching tag, so it might be a control error to uh, call foo directly, but if called with the proper catch tag available in the dynamic environment, this code with will work flawlessly. There is the unwind protect uh, form, uh, sorry, it's a special operator, that basically ensures that uh, some code is executed no matter how the stack is unwound. No matter, but I mean a standard uh, return of control, like when the, frob, uh, the function frob uh, returns after a thing that was previously initialized uh, with make, th make thing is properly frobbed or uh, processed or computed uh, or w whatever, the cleanup function is executed on it regardless of anything. If, uh, for example, due to some kind of error, uh, control leaves via non-local jump, then unwind protect is there to, uh, to ensure that cleanup is still executed regardless of, of, of everything. So we can think of it as an analog of finally from Java, for, for instance. And then there is something that is widespread in all kinds of programming languages, the means of uh, constructing function, function objects and calling them. In this case, it is the uh, operator, or rather, no, not, not the operator, the macro lambda, or if, if we want it to be pedantic, the special operator function that accepts lambda expressions. 
Uh, and there is the apply function that is really a primitive since it cannot be, how to say it, implemented it in terms of other operators. Uh, and applies a function to some arguments and then finally a list of other arguments. If this list is empty, uh, we can use fun call, which is a simpler ver version of apply where we know all the arguments ahead of time and we can just splice them into uh, the block of code. So with uh, all of these operators, uh, it's still important to have one uh, piece of functionality that is uh, implemented by the underlying languages uh, sorry the underlying language in particular we will talk about closures and uh, how it's possible to use those to support non-local control flow since all of the examples we have shown previously uh, with, with, with regard to tag body in the block were local closures let us elevate this to a new level of stack height well, what is a closure first of and foremost? Uh, we have some element of lexical environment. In this case, the, va the variable x, which is equal to 42 at the moment. And we close over it in a function that is then returned from outside this lexical environment. Like uh, in this case, uh, this is going to evaluate to some function objects. And this lexical environment is, uh, well, it is uh, left. It is no longer, I mean, uh, the function is no, no uh, the uh, function object is no longer inside this environment, even though it still refers to it. So if we call this function, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the star operator in here means that we call this uh, most previously returned uh, value, which is this function. Uh, sorry about the unreadable syntax. This is for simplification. Well, calling this lambda this anonymous function gives us the, re the answer 42. This is a very simple example of closing on some element of the lexical environment, but it's not the only thing that we can close over. In particular, let's, let's consider this example that it directly introduces non-local control flow. Let's define the function foo that is pretty simple. It accepts some kind of object and then calls it as a, as a function. Let's uh, introduce an another function, bar, that also implicitly creates a block named bar, and then create a local variable in, uh, inside it. It is going to be called fn, short for function, and it is going to be an anonymous function that returns from bar the value 42. This kind of code is legal because uh, defund bar uh, implicitly creates a block name named bar, so return from knows which block to refer to when uh, compiling uh, this form. And then finally let us call foo with this uh, function object that we have created as a local variable. What is the result of bar in this case and how does execution look? Well, first of all, we need to call bar in this case. We can see that, uh, well, bar uh, creates some kind of uh, local variable, so, so some kind of object, and then calls foo with it. Well, then, we, we, uh, we call foo afterwards. Foo uh, grabs some kind of argument and then calls it as a function. Okay, then, so we put this function on the this, on this stack. And in order to execute this function, we need to return from bar. Where's bar? Well, it's over here, uh, highlighted in blue right now. Lambda actually closed over the lexical, uh, the lexically available block named bar. And this closure now re refers to the bar that, uh, to the, how to say it, to the instance of bar that is available on the stack. So it is capable of uh, returning to the exit point of bar and uh, pass some value uh, over there. So in this case, 42. When the jump happens, bar finally returns with the value of 42. 
If we go back to this slide for a moment, we can imagine that this is uh, how a very, very, very simplified condition system works like. We can think uh, that bar uh, tried to do, uh, tried to call foo, which uh, in turn, uh, well, uh, made some kind of error. Uh, it was uh, called with uh, a means of error recovery as this, uh, well, uh, anonymous function that was passed to it. In case of error, call this function and don't worry. So it called this function and this function handled the error situation by returning from bar some predefined value. And there, the, there it is, 42. This is uh, the very, very, very general how to say it? This is the foundation upon which handling error conditions in Common Lisp is built altogether. And this uh, applies to tag body and block, which are lexically scoped operators and therefore uh, require Go uh, calls to be inside a matching tag body and the return from operators to be inside matching block, uh, lexically, uh, lexically speaking. Catch and throw doesn't really, uh, how to say it, it doesn't really need to uh, care about it since it, it is fully dynamically scoped and therefore always searches the stack uh, anyway. So if we talk about uh, unwinding in common lisp, yes, about the, the, the difference between a block, catch and the tag body, or rather tag body block and then catch, uh, there are two styles of unwinding. Tag body and go always know where exactly to return from, since this information is available as they are instantiated on the stack. There is just a jump performed and there's uh, not much more to think of. In case of catch and throw, situation is slightly different since uh, throw doesn't need where to unwind to. So first of all, it needs to search the stack for the first matching tag, and only then, where it localizes that tag, it can perform the jump. Uh, this is called as one-phase unwinding and two-phase unwinding. One phase just knows where to jump, so it jumps. Uh, the other needs uh, f uh, to figure it out before performing the jump. Oh yes, this is the slide that, that, that I was thinking of. So uh, when we try to summarize and talk about control flow in common lisp, uh, I think that all other operators, unless I am mistaken and someone on Twitch is going to point it out to me in a moment, all other control flow operators are derivatives of these primitive operators, like uh, all kinds of loops and iteration constructs, all kinds of uh, switches, uh, cases, type cases, and so on, uh, all error handling operators, so in this case, more, uh, most importantly, the handler case and ignore errors, and uh, restart operations, so restart case and with simple restarts. This uh, list uh, up here includes use cases that are not strictly related to error handling, like most importantly loops and switches that are common list macros that expand into these primitive control flow operators. And this brings me to the most, I think, important point of today's presentation, which is that control flow is strictly not equal or equivalent to exception handling. We will talk about control flow in general right now uh, to make a small detour from the main course of the presentation. And uh, I think that with all the context that I have provided so far, uh, my main point is that unwinding the stack should not be conflated with throwing exceptions since they are not the same concept. Most importantly, throwing exceptions, uh, exceptions is a subset of all control flow, as we have seen earlier. We have uh, done a lot of examples that perform uh, local and non-local control flow without even thinking about any kind of exceptional uh, si situations. All of this was completely standard and normal co control flow that was predicted by the programmer and well, just expected to happen at some point. Throwing exceptions is, is also not synom synonymous with unwinding, uh, most importantly because uh, throwing exceptions is not a primitive. Unwinding is a part of throwing exceptions, uh, 
that uh, like uh, that is uh, the, the last part actually the first one is constructing some kind of exception or condition object but uh, we can unwind wi without uh, constructing anything we can just uh, use tag body and go to a predefined tag then we might need to search for some kind of uh, handler on the stack but that is not necessary either in case of tag body and the block that know where to jump to uh, I think that uh, the language that I'm going to use as an example is going to be Python. That, uh, uh, like, uh, Python code often often uses, like, for example, race uh, 42 or something in order to perform, uh, like, bail out of uh, several functions or several stack frames at a time. And it's not really efficient, it's not really the whole point, and it's not really correct either, since, uh, well, there is more to uh, control flow that, than just raising or throwing. And uh, the languages listed here that are common lisp, dialan and smalltalk that were uh, pr previously mentioned uh, in the Wikipedia article uh, that I provided a screenshot of, they are the proofs that this is possible, feasible and, well, really, really useful. And... Uh, well, I think that I could uh, stop the presentation right now but you know there are actually three thi three more things that i wanted to talk about uh, that are somewhat tang tang uh, tangentially related uh, tangentially related to the topics that i have already touched went uh, with the first one and uh, possibly the most uh, complex of the three is uh, proving one phase unwind in case of tag body and block so this slide that we have already seen previously says that tag body and the block don't need to search the stack in order to perform the jump. They can just un start unwinding and uh, unwind all the way they want to. Like they they can just start unwinding and something 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 will just uh, handle them. Uh, this becomes troublesome a little bit when we consider blocks like uh, this. We have a lexical block named foo and then return a function that refers to this block. Well, this is a correct code, like this is going to return a function, no problem. Uh, except uh, what happens when we try to call a function re uh, resulting from such a... from evaluating such a thing. The specification states that uh, condition control error should be signaled and signaling means that the stack must not be unwound, but instead it, uh, instead it, it should be preserved. So if return from returns blindly, like it just unwinds the stack, then we are in trouble because uh, if uh, the block is no, uh, no longer there, we shouldn't unwind the stack and instead uh, signal a control error. The question is how to solve this uh, issue, how to make this work. The solution that uh, Steelbank Common Lisp uh, does uh, is to close over some kind of uh, data that states where, whether block uh, is uh, valid or not. We will work on it uh, a little bit and implement it in uh, Common Lisp it itself. Yes, we are implementing block in Common Lisp right now. Let's start with the block itself and expand it into something like this. We define some kind of uh, variable named the return valid p that uh, is then set to nil at the end of an unwind protect block. This unwind protect block has a primitive that I have just invented, unwind tag, that is a very very primitive thing that tells the stack that this is where you want to unwind to. This is the tag that informs uh, return from that this is where it should unwind to. This is how the block is uh, possibly expanded. So now let's expand the lambda, the anonymous function containing uh, the return from uh, form. We can expand it like this. Uh, lambda stays in place since it's uh, well it's not really expanded but return from now uh, looks like this we have an if that depends on the value of return valid p if it is true and only if it is true we use another primitive that that performs a one phase unwind to tag named foo 
So if the return, uh, so if it is possible to return, then it uh, performs the unwind. Otherwise, it signals the control error as, as it should. The whole picture looks like this, and the most important construct, I think, uh, is these three parts, along with the unwind protect. Initially, the return is valid, and the lambda is actually a closure that closes over this uh, implicit var variable. The value of this variable is set to nil when the uh, when control leaves this uh, unwind tag, the scope, the lexical scope of this unwind tag. And afterwards, uh, if we try to call this function, it can detect that uh, return valid p is nil and uh, signal a, a control error as it should. Uh, it is similar to uh, generalize the, this to tag body and go. Basically, uh, this is uh, this kind of construct is wrapped around the tag body, and each go, uh, re uh, how to say it, uh, checks if this tag body is still in scope. If it's not, then it shouldn't uh, perform the jump. The second thing that is pretty simple, but I think uh, should be mentioned for completeness, is the description of uh, unwind protect and its semantics. Basically, we have these unwinding operators that are capable of unwinding the stack, which are go and return from and throw, with their matching uh, tag bodies, blocks, and catches. Unwind protect uh, is designed to interfere with those, specifically interfere with those. Uh, let's have an example where we have uh, several functions on the stack, foo, bar, bus, cooks, and throb. And uh, let's say that uh, there are there is a pair of uh, unwind protect uh, forms in effect inside functions bar and cooks and there is some code inside them that needs to be executed when control leaves uh, those and we want to jump from frob to foo to the exit point of foo well this kind of jump this kind of naive jump is kind of uh, invalid since if we perform it like this, then the cleanup forms that might have opened files, opened network connections, allocated foreign objects, uh, are not really executed, which, exec which introduces a lot of uh, troublesome state into our program. And so we shouldn't do it like this. Instead, uh, unwinding forms uh, must, re uh, how to say it, uh, they must respect the unwind protect forms that are along the way on the stack. So one possible uh, um, way of doing uh, control flow in this case is performing three jumps like this. First to the uh, uh, to the cleanup forms inside cooks, then cl cleanup forms inside bar, and then finally to the exit point of foo, which ensures that all the cleanup is done and uh, everything is good in the world. This is a pretty simple explanation. I think that most of the people present uh, watching this video already know how it works, but I have mentioned it in context of this third and last one, I promise, appendix, uh, which is uh, com uh, trying to implement a common lisp condition system outside and without the common lisp. Uh, the primitives that I have mentioned uh, that are available in Common Lisp are these ones. And uh, let's talk about another programming language that has some of these constructs, but not all. Let's talk about Java. We have the if construct, naturally. We have uh, means of creating new functions, but uh, by means of uh, new or the uh, Lambda syntax uh, uh, that made uh, writing Java bearable starting from Java 8. Uh, we have function application by, by means of calling the apply method of these uh, function objects that, that are created. We have the equivalent of unwind protect uh, that is try finally. And we have nothing more that represents this construct for common lisp. In exchange, we have the facility for throwing exceptions from Java code into Java code or, well, all the way into destruction if nothing handles them. And this is troublesome when trying to implement a condition system because tag body and go and block and return from and such uh, they, are, they are pretty necessary to knowing where exactly to unwind to. 
Uh, the Java throw is blind, as in it throws and doesn't really look where or how uh, it is going to be handled or caught or whatever. Well, it just throws and it does fire and forget. It performs an, a non-local jump into, well, we don't know where. In case of checked exceptions, this kind of can be statically uh, the how to say the deduced but in case of uh, unchecked ex exceptions which are much 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 more uh, useful than the, the, than the checked ones uh, it's not possible in the general case so it is a little bit troublesome but there is this paper by Henry J uh, Henry G Baker about meta circular semantics for common lisp special forms in particular, uh, this paper describes uh, a, def a meta-circular definition for common lisp special forms, so implementing one kind of special form in terms of other kinds of special forms. This makes it possible, as uh, Baker says, to enable some sophisticated systems like portable common loops, which is one of the uh, early implementations of uh, common lisp object system, uh, to become truly portable. And the question is, can we really f take this portability to the extreme and use a little bit of uh, definitions and concepts and uh, tips from this paper to implement a condition system, which is also a fairly sophisticated one, uh, nowhere as complex as uh, Silos, but nonetheless uh, still pretty complex, outside Common Lisp and in, for example, Java. So can we port the condition system altogether to Java? Uh, is our question, and then uh, this question directly depends on whether we can port the control flow operators to Java, since the actual error handling that depends directly on this kind of control flow operators that know where exactly to jump, where to go to, and uh, how to say it, uh, just handle all the tough stuff uh, behind the scenes. And that's the big, big question. Can the control flow operators from Common Lisp be implemented in Java if all we have is if the branching operator, the function creation and application in form of a new function or new supplier or new consumer or new runnable or whatever else it is called in Java and the application of these functions. We also have uh, try finally that acts as a, an unwind protect. We are lucky that, that that we have it because it would be pretty hard to do things otherwise. And we have throw, the Java throw that just throws blindly and then uh, doesn't care about anything. That we can interpret as a very very primitive uh, unwinding operator. Well, the resulting implementation is uh, was, or rather, uh, I should say, was not as complex as I thought it would be, though it was somewhat annoying, because to quote Abraham Maslow, uh, when all you have is throwing exceptions, everything else starts to look like a catch block. But still, uh, it is possible, and a very simple condition system and implementation of control flow operators from Common Lisp is available over here uh, on GitHub, and it should be, how do you say it, it is, it has some basic tests, it uh, still might have some conformance issues uh, with regard to Common Lisp Hyperspec, in particular, uh, I don't think it respects at the moment uh, the way of uh, transferring control to an exit point, so CLHS 5.2, if I remember correctly, but uh, this might get fixed in the future, and uh, it's not really the point to be fully compliant with Common Lisp. Uh, it's uh, the point to, de to demonstrate that a condition system can be implemented in Java without really much problem. The original version that I have created was uh, done in like a weekend or so of... Um, well, I, I cannot uh, call myself, myself a wizard of uh, adapt time. And this demonstrates in turn that uh, exceptions are not really required, they are not really the only way to handle errors in programming languages. Java could have instead implemented conditions instead of uh, blind, uh, blind exception throwing. They simply chose not to. 
So for further language designers and such, uh, you have a choice uh, and you can actually do stuff uh, in a more flexible way than just uh, deciding to panic, unwinding the stack and either, how to say it, uh, crashing the program or having someone, so something uh, catch it after a large part of the stack is already destroyed and you ca cannot really continue computation from that point on the stack. Uh, you need to redo some more. But yes, I am already rambling. Uh, I think that this is all. And actually, yes, this is really all for now. So, uh, that's the end of my video. That's the end of this uh, Lisp talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And in case of any questions, I think you know where to find me. Uh, please just ask them and I will try to answer. Thank you and goodbye.